Justin Fields. He and the Steelers are now three and zero on the season. Maz, you said you tweeted that play out yesterday. I did. I, Why? No, I, Why? I just, Why'd you tweet it? I just tweeted it about ten minutes ago. Oh. Why'd you tweet it 10 minutes ago? I just thought it might be a good opportunity to look at a guy you could have had if you were a Patriots fan. Again, as your fill-in guy, and I think the uh, the more evidence we get, and look, I don't I don't know what's going to happen with Justin Fields. He might suck. The Steelers might go 3-14 and 14 for all I know. Here's what I do know. He was worth taking a chance on. Give it a shot. As a, as a, and if he is a bridge quarterback, and he may be nothing more than that, you still have the chance that he would figure it out, that the light would go on, and that all of a sudden you actually have yourself a pretty decent player. I wanted him to. Do you think? But do you think he'd be doing anything here with this, this offensive line? line? Yeah. Probably not. Right. But but I will say that you know the, that play stuck out because it was a relatively short pass, ten between ten and fifteen yards beyond the line of scrimmage. I think so. I don't know where Austin exactly caught it, but it was not a absurdly simple throw. I mean, there was a relatively tight window there that is a, a good look. You can see it from the end zone camera. And Orlovsky, Dan Orlovsky of ESPN pointed this out. Uh, I don't know if it was last night, this morning. I might have seen it on social. But the window closed. The window closed. Field had to get that ball in there. And he delivered it quickly, uh, you know, on a line, a good decision, got it in there, and then Austin turned it up the middle of the field and was gone. So, like, they each had a hand in the play, and there is something going on there in Pittsburgh that suggests that maybe Justin Fields is starting to figure it out a little bit. And I'm not telling you he's going to pass for 400 yards. He might never be that kind of quarterback. But what if he is kind of a Lamar Jackson knockoff, for lack of a better word, a guy who can run and pass for 200 yards? Well, I mean, let me put it to you like this. I just looked at it. He's the 11th rated quarterback in the league. He's 11th right yep. now in QB rating. And he's actually 12th, but Andy Dalton has automatically now gone to second in the league. Exactly. So I'm right. going to take out Andy Dalton and just go with the guys that have started uh, the three games this year. He ranks 11th. Uh, Justin Fields does. Can you can you win with the 11th uh, rated quarterback in the league? Sure. Yes. I, th- I think so. If you have a good enough team around him, can yes. you win at a high level with the 11th rated quarterback? Yeah, I don't know if you can repeat as Super Bowl champion. You know, uh, to win two or three titles and call it six or seven years or ten years, but can you win a championship with that kind of guy? Yeah, is that good enough? If, sure. Uh, it, uh, Murray, hi, hi. If Drake May is the 11th rated quarterback in the league, is that a, is that good enough? Sure isn't. No. Uh, you're not going to win a Super Bowl with that. You need to be better than 11th. You're going to be in the, the seventh at the, at the lowest, I would think. Uh, you know, you can maybe maybe make a conference championship with something like that if you have a really good surrounding cast, but you got to be better than 11th. That's just kind of middle of the pack to me. Yeah, it's a question. I'm not sure. You know, that feels borderline to me that you would need to be better. Uh, you know, certainly there was a time you could do that with the 11th rated quarterback. I don't know. You know, but again, the league, the offense is down. It feels like the league's kind of evolving. I, I, I don't know. Borderline. You know, but he, you know, he's the 11th rated quarterback in the league. And maybe that's his ceiling. Like, you know, maybe Justin Fields. I'm not sure what his ceiling is, but that might be it. You know, just, just around the top 10. And if that's not good enough, it might not be good enough. But it's just an interesting, I thought it was an interesting weekend as it relates to this this question that we've been talking about and banding about. It's where the Patriots are and it's where a lot of the league is. And, you know, what's your path to finding that quarterback? Because we all agree it's quarterbacks by far the most important piece. And it's where it all sort of germinates off of that quarterback. So how do you get it? How do you get there? How do you get that play? How do you achieve that level of play? How do you get a... (coughs) excuse me, a championship caliber passing game. How do you get there? What's the best path to do it? And I just think this weekend was another glaring example of the path that most teams want to take is not the path, which is sucking, drafting, and throwing a young quarterback out there in front of a bad team. Like, I just, I just, I do not think that works. It has not worked for a while, yet everyone thinks that that's what you have to do, and it's just not working out. The young quarterbacks in this league suck. <coughs> Excuse me. Or can't win or not winning yet. Or they're rushed into it. They're put in bad situations. Yeah. I mean, there's a million. Of them, so let's talk about it. 617 779 Why? How come I got to watch an NFL weekend where the quarterbacks that won? And this is just off the top of my head. But 
Justin Fields, Matt Stafford, Jared Goff, Malik Willis, Geno Smith, Sam Darnold, Andy Dalton. I'm sure there's more. No, you get a pretty representative yeah. list there. Though. I'm sure there's more if I if I just thought about it for a second. Second chance guys, bridge guys, holdover guys, backups. Like that they all fall into that absolutely that clump. And even though obviously Goff and Stafford were once highly drafted, they're second chance guys. At best, they are tier two quarterbacks. You know what I'm saying? So like why why do I gotta watch NFL weekend where that's those are the guys who are winning? And then I watch these other guys, all of whom have been drafted in the last two, three years. And like to a man, they all suck. Like I, I watched portions of that uh, Chicago indie game yesterday. It's like, oh my God, this Richardson kid. There were some balls he threw that were just unbelievably. Can oh. I just tell you quickly? I I bet the under in that game for that reason. But keep going. No, but so like, why why is it? So like, we can discuss. But what I do find amazing is that the teams keep doing that that second thing. It's like, no, better to lose. The higher you draft, the better you are, and you have to draft the quarterback, and you've got to play him because how else do you develop him unless he's playing? And so all these teams do the same thing, and then I turn on the TV, and none of them are winning. It's all the other guys. So explain that to me. 617-779-0985. Murray, you got a theory? Yeah, I think they're rushed into poor situations and they don't have really good offensive-minded coaches. Because the other thing that you're seeing, Mike, that is fine, is becoming interesting is these guys that were highly drafted that definitely had talent but that were put in terrible situations are now on their second, third, Sam Darnold's case, what, fourth or fifth team. And now he's got a really good offensive-minded coach in O'Connell, and he's surrounded by a lot of talent there. And the talent was always there inside him, but he got broken mentally, had to bounce around the league a little bit. He's still younger than uh, like some of the younger quarterbacks in the league, too. That's the other thing. He's younger than um, Joe Burrow. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Sam Darnold's younger than Joe Burrow? Yeah. And, na- and so now he's with a really good offensive-minded coach. He feels comfortable. He's found his way again, and he's starting to, he's starting to show something. So... Yeah, I just think it's, these guys are rushed. They're rushed and put in terrible situations. And I think you're seeing that right now with, with Caleb Williams. Like, I don't like him because of his personality, and that's why I personally root against him. That's just a me thing. But you know that the talent's there. Have you seen the offensive line he's trying to play behind? It's as bad as the Patriots, if not worse. Might be worse. And the coaches are clueless. And the coaches are like, ass clowns. Yeah, completely stupid. Did you see the thing where they forgot to go to two? Or they couldn't figure out whether to go to one or two? Just Google it. Look it up. They got uh, – I want to say they made it uh, – a fourteen to nine game, perhaps, or maybe thirteen to, maybe thirteen to nine. I it was, God, I just I I had it. We just started. I'll figure it out for you. But there was a, uh, Chicago scored a late touchdown and a two pointer would have made it a three point game, and the Eberflus couldn't figure out whether to go to one or two. They 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 had to burn a timeout. They had to burn a timeout because they originally sent the extra point team out there, and then someone somewhere figured out, oh, no, if we go for two, watch it. He's fumbling around on the sidelines. You'll see it. So, like, the, so it's, it's, <sighs> let me ask you again. Who would you rather be, the Patriots or the Steelers? Steelers. I'd rather be the Patriots. I'll tell you, I like I'd the, rather be the Steelers. So I liked, again, the, the quarterback part of it's a big part of the discussion, but I liked Fields before he ended up in Pittsburgh. Maury, let me ask you, who would you rather be, the Bears or the Steelers? Bears. The Bears. Because I still think there's unknown and upside with Caleb Williams. I just, it, the Steelers for me personally are a bad example because I just think I know what they're, to me, I feel like I know what their ceiling is. Like, I just, when's the last time a team's been at a conference championship? And I don't think Justin Fields is the answer. You can only get so far in really good defensive, good coaching. Tomlin's a great coach. That they're 3 and 0 is great for them. I just don't think that they have a high ceiling, is all. So, and I get that. I mean, again, you know, uh, Caleb Williams' talent is off the charts. I get this is part of the reason I hesitate. He's just another kid thrown behind another bad team. Of course, but you acknowledge it's not going to work. But he, but you acknowledge that he has u- unique, of ab- unique ability. Sure. So that's what you're betting on. I mean, uh, Drake May's not that much different. It, it, but it takes more than that. No, no, I'm not saying that. I, I mean, unless you're is so. Well, I mean, go ahead. But no, no, you, but that's where you start, is you start with a requisite level of talent. So to Murray's point, like Fields is only going to get probably get so far, I think. But with May and Williams, because of the raw ability, there's a chance that those guys will both turn into prolific passers. So, you know, I, I get that logic. I just, I had a higher opinion of Fields than he did. 
I just need, I just need some, uh, some evidence that doing that thing, sucking, drafting a kid high, and throwing them out there behind a bad team turns you around. Okay, so like it has happened. I mean, I think Burrow in Cincinnati is an example. And C.J. Stroud in Houston is probably an example. Although, let's see what happens here in year two. I wonder if he's already starting to backslide a little bit. But let's see. Uh, So like those are two. But for those two, I'll give you like 12 that went the other way. So it's like, like the hit rate of those young kids being thrown onto a bad team and playing right away. I just don't see it working. Like if I had seen, no, that I agree with. It. Like the if, success rates low. Like if that worked more often, I'd sit there and say, "Yeah, I'd rather be the Bears with Caleb Williams. I'd rather be the Patriots with Drake May." But I don't see it. It's like a it's like a twenty percent hit rate. It fails way more often than it succeeds. Definitely. So like what I that I I'd, I'd rather the teams that have succeeded have put younger quarterbacks into a stronger position and gone from there, and so. Until that flips, I'm sorry. I'd rather be a team like the Pittsburgh Steelers. Because I also know at least Pittsburgh's, I think, trying. You know, they drafted a kid in the first round a couple of years ago. Didn't work out. Now they're trying this. They threw two things at it. They, you know, bird shot. Russell Wilson, Justin Fields, uh, Pickett. Like, and if it doesn't work, I'm pretty confident they'll go and try again. And they're a good organization. They know what they're doing. I think they have a much better chance for success than starting at the bottom and throwing some kid out there behind a bad team. It just you've got to admit, like it's a fact. It's just not it's not working. Yeah, more often than it do- not, it doesn't. But having because I watched a chunk of that Indianapolis, <coughs> excuse me, Chicago game too. Horrid. Both those those guys should be sat. They should. It, it, Richardson might not be able to play. Got overdrafted, but in Williams' case, and I thought this a little bit watching the game Sunday night a week ago against Houston, he can't play behind that offensive line. They should fire those coaches and sit his ass down for a year. He should not be playing. Anthony Richardson, like it wasn't that long ago, he would not have been drafted in the first round, not even close. Yeah, Correct. absolutely. You not. look at that guy, and like he only played what, like half a year like or something, right. twenty games or something like no, that. No, it's less. That? I yeah. would say it was like twelve. Yeah, Murray. that's what it was. It was I, like I, twelve. Like there's like all of a sudden. He gets drafted. Where was he? Uh, it's like Florida, sixth. No, like where was he in the draft? I think he oh, went yeah. five. Yeah, he was. Like, he was definitely in the top. He 10. went five. I think he went number five overall. Like I don't think people realize how stupid it's gotten. Ridiculous. You know, Mac Jones is a a, a guy with that kind of arm, physical ability is drafted in the first round. Bo Nix is drafted eleventh, twelfth. I think might have been. Well, no, I, I whatever. Go. I mean, <laughs> he's not first round talent. Bryce Young, I can't play. Like and like, I I do love how everyone. Well, that's the you know Bryce Young goes to Carolina and sucks, and everyone says, "Well, it's the owner." They said, "What's the owner? What? What are you talking about? It's the owner." I mean, did you, yeah, the owner's a doofus, of course. What does that have to do with the quarterback with not knowing what to do? That's not the, the Bryce Young isn't the owner's fault. I mean, is he? I, I, he's the owner's fault because the owner asked Carolina or made Carolina draft him. But if Carolina didn't draft him, the next team was going to. That's right. Bryce Young was going to be drafted in the top three. So whether it's David Tepper or Harry Schmedlap, that it's not the owner's fault that Bryce Young sucks. Whose fault that is is this stupid thing that the league has fallen into, where you have to draft the quarterback. And now there's guys who are getting drafted who have, who, and have no business being drafted where they're drafted and then being thrown out there. And it's, it's just stupid. I just It blows me away that it, the more people don't see it. And Richardson was four, not five. This oh guy's out of control. He was four. Oh, there's, like, on what planet? Like he, He's someone I would definitely draft and put on the bench and put in my system and get back to in a couple of years. No, he's like a third-round flyer at quarterback, maybe even a fourth. But instead, nope, here's the team right out of the chute. I mean, it's just gotten stupid. And frankly, it's the only thing I feel good about with the Patriots is that they're not doing that with their kid. If you like that clip, check out more videos from Felger and Mez here. For more Patriots analysis and opinion, hit this playlist. And for all the latest from the Sports Hub, download the app at 98.5thesportshub.com.